Well, cannons had to be charged with gunpowder, but how is the gunpowder made? Out of three things, charcoal, saltpetre and sulphur. And the charcoal was made out of sort of burning wood, but saltpetre and sulphur had to be dug out of the ground. And before they were used, they had to be refined. The raw saltpetre was mixed with water and boiled in these huge vats. And as it boiled, all the scum and impurities came to the top and they could be scraped off. The rest was clean saltpetre, and it was evaporated in trays to give clean crystals. They look a bit like table salt. The third component was sulphur, which was usually lumpy, so it had to be crushed in the sulphur mill. This consisted of a wooden tub and two large, heavy stamp hammers, which moved up and down, smashing the lumps of sulphur into a fine powder. As they did that, the whole tub rotated to keep the mixture evenly distributed. This was all driven by a series of wheels and pulleys connected to this enormous wooden water wheel, which would turn, moving the whole mechanism, and the water wheel was driven by a stream of water which was directed underneath the wheel and it caught in buckets or paddles which filled up and then rotated the whole mechanism. It worked like this. And these water wheels were one of the major sources of power in factories of those times. That water wheel drove the green charge mill. And here for the first time the ingredients and components were mixed together into raw gunpowder. The water wheel drove these giant gears and they were made out of wood and handmade with all these cogs and things. And they were connected together in such a way that the mixer went in one direction while the tub went in another. It was just like the kitchen mixer you might have at home. And when that was a finely mixed black raw gunpowder, it was taken off and it was refined rather than the ingredients. The next stage was the gunpowder incorporating mill in which about 10 kilograms of the raw gunpowder was placed with a small amount of water onto a circular stone slab covered with leather for safety. The whole thing was pressed down by two enormous stone wheels called runners. These were driven by this mechanism of gears and wheels, once again driven by the water wheel. After about three hours, the mixture had been pressed down into what was known as mill cake. This was carefully taken out and slowly but surely transported to the next place, which was the breaking mill. And this is where things got really dangerous, because the gunpowder was crushed down to a powder here. And crushing gunpowder is never too safe. In fact, those cakes were put up the top into a hopper, and they dropped down between two rollers. Two like this. There's one on the other side and the rollers ground the cakes into powder and granules and they dropped down into the, the barrow beneath them. And of course the air was full of gunpowder dust, which made it very, very dangerous indeed. So dangerous that the floor was covered with skin so that nobody could strike a spark from their shoes. Actually the workers had to wear special slippers, they weren't allowed to carry uh, matches or cigarettes or anything like that. If they were caught with them, it meant 10 years jail. Anyway, the granules and the dust were taken away in a barrow to the next stage of the process. This is the separating room and that's a shaker frame. The frame is made of wood and it's suspended from the ceiling by four ropes and driven by an enormous metal crank. The whole process was so dangerous they had to stop every 15 minutes in case the crank became hot enough to ignite gunpowder. Well the frame had ten circular sieves on it and these contained parchment or fine cloth and this shaking motion meant that they could separate the gunpowder into two grades fine gunpowder, which was used for small guns, and coarse gunpowder, used for cannons. And that gunpowder came here for the final processing, which was glazing. It was put into barrels and tumbled, and that knocked the sharp corners off each grain and gave each grain a bright and shiny finish. Not to make it look pretty, but to make it much more resistant to water, which otherwise would get into it and stop it firing on military service. Well, the finished gunpowder was taken off and dried very carefully in steam ovens, and then it was packaged up and ready for the cannons. 